We mentioned earlier that one of the problems of relativistic quantum mechanics is the causality problem. It happens when a particle can uh, travel faster than speed of light. And you end up with the paradox that the cause can happen after the consequence. So that's why we strongly believe that nothing can go faster than speed of light. To show that uh, we violate causality so we can go faster than speed of light in quantum mechanics, we need to start with a fundamental object which is the amplitude of probability for a particle to be at some position qi initially to end up in some uh, position qf after some time. Q represents the position and H is the Hamiltonian of the system. So we have a, a free particle, we assume there is no potential and no interaction. This operator here is um, evolution operator. So this quantity tells me that for a particle initially in QI, um, and evolving over time t using this evolution operator, so defined by this Hamiltonian, um, what is the amplitude of probability to end up in the state QF? We can represent that in a space-time diagram. So we have defined uh, two events, the initial and the final event, and uh, an interval between these two events. Let's consider this interval to be space-like, meaning that the uh, difference between QF and QI, which I write Q, is greater uh, than T. Remember that we are in, in um, uh, natural units, so the speed of light C is equal to 1. This interval is outside the light cone, defined by uh, Q equal T, um, meaning that the particle initially in QI cannot end up in QF after such a short time T without violating causality. So what we need to do is to calculate this amplitude of probability for a space-like interval, and if it is non-zero, then we have a causality problem. So we first do that in non-relativistic quantum mechanics uh, for free particle, so with the Hamiltonian equal to the kinetic energy P squared on 2m. We now insert the completeness relation in the momentum basis. Notice that we use a different convention for the completeness relation than what you may have seen in earlier courses. In this course we will use the identity equal to so we don't have a factor 2 pi um, in position basis but we have a factor 2 pi in momentum basis. Notice that we are now in uh, one dimension, so we only have one factor 2 pi. Uh, if we were in uh, two dimension, we will have 2 pi squared. In three dimension, 2 pi cubic, etc. In general, every time you see an integral over momentum dnp, you can expect to see a factor 2 pi n in the denominator. This asymmetric treatment um, between space and time uh, is conventional and very usual in all of the books, in particular in quantum field theory. One consequence is that when you take the overlap between the momentum state P with a position state X, this is simply equal to exponential I P X, so there is no square root 2 pi in the denominator. Therefore, we recognize exponential minus i p q i, while the action of the momentum operator on the state p simply gives we can now rewrite our amplitude without any bracket and operator. Note that the integral runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. We recognize a Gaussian integral of the form
So by identifying A equal IT on M and J equal IQ, we can solve this integral to get Clearly it is not zero, uh, meaning that we have a causality problem, but that's not surprising because we started um, in a non-relativistic uh, framework of quantum mechanics. So what happens now when we go to um, relativistic treatment starting with a relativistic expression for the Hamiltonian?